whoa, whoa, whoa. To truly understand what's going on here, I first have to explain how this all came to be. Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to another video. And before we go any further, let me just tell you, this video is insane, you're not gonna wanna miss it. But before I can show you why this is insane, I have to take you back a few weeks, a few weeks to a garage sale. You see, a few weeks ago while I was out at the garage sales, I came across one sale in particular where I picked up this A-Team Armored Adventure Set vehicle, and let me tell you, that one pickup led to something crazy. You see, when I walked up to this particular sale, a woman asked me, hey, are you looking for anything in specific? And I told her my normal rundown, I'm looking for video games, old toys, electronics, just anything that I thought I could make money on. Anything specific you're seeking? Uh, I kind of look for like video games and old toys and stuff like that. Oh, I've got to, I'm an old toy sales rep. That's at my dad's house. We're selling to the guys at the toy department, like uh, probably a couple many thousands of dollars worth of stuff. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, little did I know that one act of me asking for toys would lead to the events of this video. You see, the seller started telling me about how her dad was actually a toy distributor from back in the day, and in fact, he worked in the industry inventing toys for over 20 years. And during this time, he's amassed a huge collection of various different toys, both new, used, and even prototypes of some stuff that was never released before. And these are, there's so much, this is, that's a prototype toy, but from someone from Fairfield, Ohio, a long time yeah. ago, there's a Smurf. AM, FM radio. All kinds of stuff. I mean, if you can see, that's an early like, Transformers. Transformers. Um, I mean, it's old. Oh yeah, that's cool. This you got some I can't cool find stuff. anywhere. That I don't know. That's Space 2000, but I don't know if that ever. I mean, this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's boxes I haven't even done yet. So obviously, I was a little interested. Unfortunately, at the time, she did not have a ton of those toys at her house at the time of the yard sale. Only a few that she had stashed away in the back of the closet. And that's where I got that A-Team Adventure set and that little dog Tamagotchi. And after I ended up purchasing those couple toys that she had on her, we exchanged numbers in hopes that I would be able to meet her at her father's place and hopefully get inside and see some awesome stuff. And finally, after weeks of trying to set up an appointment time, a time that would work for both of us, plans falling through, I finally got in there and let me tell you, it was awesome. All that time trying to set up and get this private pick underway was 100% worth it. There was just so much stuff. There was stuff from the 50s all the way up to the mid 2000s and I had one of the first picks of the lot. Check out all this stuff. Now, I did end up filming while I was down in the basement with them. They knew I was filming. They knew I had a YouTube channel, but I want to respect the privacy of the family. So I'm only going to show you the sections of B-roll that I shot, but still, you'll get the point. It's awesome. Check it out. was just so much cool stuff down in that basement all in one place could you ask for more as you could see from that b-roll there was a ton of stuff in that basement to choose from and look through it was just a overwhelming experience and you might have noticed i said i was one of the first people to get down into that basement to see what they had they said they had one other private picker come earlier in the week before i did to see if they wanted anything first i don't know if they were a family friend or how that went down I didn't care because I still got in there. Also, when we were first starting to talk about me coming up and picking through what they had, she had mentioned that she had reached out to a local toy store about coming in and buying out everything that she had, and she let me know they were actually coming the exact same day I was, so that's why this was my last chance to get in there. So if I wanted to do this, I had to do it now. So I ended up getting in there, and I ended up getting 
some very, very good items. I'm really happy with everything that I got. Now, some of her stuff was priced out. She was very good with eBay. She knew how to use it. She had been pricing out some of the higher end items before I and this other picker and the toy company came just to make sure she wasn't like getting screwed on a deal, which is completely understandable. I do not blame her one bit. So because she was pricing out stuff and had a good idea of what everything was worth, I did end up leaving some items that I just thought were a little too high for me to make some money on that I would normally be 100% interested in. Like she had a boxed uh, Sega Master System, she had some boxed laser tag stuff, some Raggedy Ann dolls, some miscellaneous loose stuff that I would normally be all over grabbing, but at the prices she was asking, it just didn't make sense for me to buy to resell. But now, let's finally get in to the pickup. And I think we'll start out with my favorite thing I got, this right here. Friends, this game right here may not look like anything much to you, might just look like just another vintage pinball game, but let me tell you, this thing is special. This right here is a one of a kind item. This is a battery operated Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles pinball game. And why is that special? Well, this right here is the prototype that her dad had made to send into companies in hopes that it would get approved and picked up and put on shelves. Well, from the story they told me, this got accepted by a company, the company bought it off of them, but it never made it into production. So this right here is the only one in the world that exists. And let me show you something cool. You can see here on the box that you has these lines that are segmenting the graphics on the front of the pinball machine. And that's because it is a paneling that goes over top of the box. It's not actually printed straight on the box itself. And then if I open it up, there's a few different pieces. It still has the balls and the legs that make the pinball machine stand and playable. But look at this board right here. This is what the board of the pinball machine looks like. It is hand colored. You can see all the marker lines and the detail from when her father was creating this thing. What a cool piece. And then on the top part of the pinball machine, you can also see that the back was colored and hand markered in by her father. You can just tell the work that he put into this thing before he pitched it to the company. And what's really cool is that board that I just showed you was actually printed on this printout on the box. So this pinball machine right here is this board and header right here. This is the exact same one that's on the box right there because that's the only one that was ever made. How cool is that. I'm sure as I was just explaining that, I was flashing up some B-roll of this pinball machine in the box itself so you guys could get an idea of just how cool this thing is. And I, I am just in awe that this was something they were willing to sell. How freaking cool is that? Now, as far as valuing this thing, I have zero idea what this thing could be worth. I have sold some toy prototypes in the past, specifically some Care Bear prototypes. I had two of them and I ended up putting them up at auction, but I didn't really have interest in Care Bears and TMNT is something that I can appreciate. So I'll probably end up hanging on to this for a little bit. And when I do end up deciding to sell it at some point in the future, I might reach out to either some private collectors. I might just put it up on eBay with a decently high starting bid price, or I might even reach out to a professional toy auction house. I'm not really sure how to price that thing out, what to expect out of it, or anything like that. If you have any idea of what my best course of action should be for that when I do decide to sell it, let me know down in the comments. And while that was my favorite item that I ended up picking up, let me show you what else we got. There's still some pretty cool stuff here. I guess to continue on, we'll stick with the pinball theme. I got this Wildfire electronic pinball. It is complete in the box. You can see it even still has the styrofoam on the inside. That's pretty cool. It looks like these are selling for right around 50 bucks. I ended up grabbing two of these Catamino board games. They're like little wooden puzzle things. These are some of the newer items that he ended up having there, but I grabbed both of these because they looked like they were comping out around $30 a piece. And then we've got a Bambino UFO Master Blaster Station. I'm guessing this is probably from the 80s, and I believe the comps on this were around $40. And then another little handheld game. This is a Fun Dimensions Sound Gizmo. This thing right here, it looks like it's some kind of like Morse code type thing and it has a bunch of different sounds over here on the side. Jet plane, phaser, explosion, gunshot. So it's just something that makes sounds. It looks like it was going for around 40 to 50 bucks. And then I was able to get a few different Sega Master System games off of them. They did have the console itself, but it was priced up at like 250 bucks, which is about retail for a box system. However, these games were affordable, so I got them. I got World Grand Prix, 
Hang On Safari Hunt. And then the two better games, Teddy Boy here, which is complete in the box. This is about a $50 game. And Fantasy Zone as well. Again, this is about another 50 bucks. And then I have some of the stuff that I gravitated to first, and that is these little virtual pet keychains. You guys might remember these Tamagotchis. These are brand new in the box. I got two of the Tamagotchi ones. A Dinky Dino, again, brand new in the box. This little V Puppy, which is pretty similar to the one that I got off of her at the first yard sale. Three of these pet vets right here. You can see a dinosaur one over here on the left, and then two of the puppy ones over here on the right. And then I think there was one loose one somewhere. Up, oh, yep, right here. We got one loose Tamagotchi right there. I think this is a dinosaur one. If you guys don't know about these, some can be worth some insane money. I mean, a couple hundred bucks for one of these things. Unfortunately, all of these ones are more common ones. She did have one rarer one, but again, she priced it up. But I am completely happy with this little haul. These ones should go anywhere between like 20 bucks and $60 a piece. And then the only Power Rangers toy they ended up having, a Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Kimberly from 1993. What's cool about this is she said she thinks this was potentially a prototype as well, one of the final ones before it hit the line. She's not 100% sure, and her dad said he thought that it was the same thing, but again, they couldn't be 100% certain, so I'm gonna have to do some research on this and figure out if this is a prototype or not. Either way, the ones that aren't prototypes are still looking like they're going between 40 and 60 bucks online. I also ended up getting a couple soft good items from them. I got a couple new kids on the block pillowcases. This one right here, as well as this one right here. Got two of them. So those two, I have no idea what they're worth. I didn't really look them up. I just threw them in the pile because I thought they were cool. And then this one was the one that caught my eye. This is an Illusion of Gaia, which is a vintage video game, if you guys don't know about it. But this is a promotional t-shirt for it, and I've actually sold this used t-shirt before, and I think I sold it for around 70 bucks used. So a new one, I have no idea what it'll go for, but that's pretty cool. And then the last few toy items I got from them were these blasts from the past. Furbies, brand new in the box. There are a few of them that have the boxes open, but we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and number nine. That is nine different Furbies. Some of the boxes are in better shape than others, but all of them have the box, so that's a good thing. Loose Furbies tend to go around 25 bucks or so if they're the original like 1999 ones, but ones in the box like these tend to go around $50 a piece, and some of them can go for much more depending if they are a rare one. I haven't looked up any of these to see if they are some of the rare ones. I don't believe they are, but still around 50 bucks a piece on each of these. And then finally, the last couple items that I got off of them are not toy related. They just had some random electronics out. There is this vintage Sony Walkman right here. It should go for around $25. Another Sony Walkman. This one is a better one. It looks like if this ends up working, it'll be worth around $40. A Sony Discman. That should go for around $25. These are cool. I'm surprised they don't have more value than they do, but this is a Sony Watchman, which is a little portable TV, and I think these go for around 20 to 25 bucks if it works. Then a Bose portable CD player. This one looks like it's going for around 40. Some more Bose stuff. This is a pair of quiet comfort headphones. These should go for around 50. And then the best little miscellaneous electronic, this Sony Walkman little MP3 player. This is actually selling for around 80 to 100 bucks for this little guy. The last item here is a Commodore 64. I've actually sold these in the past. If you guys don't know about these, they're old vintage computer systems, and there are some games and stuff for them worth some decent amount, but this right here is the console itself. And then it also came with this giant floppy disk drive. This is a Commodore 1541 floppy disk drive. This is what they used to use to open up programs. Can you believe that? that? Thing's huge. And that system also came with the Commodore DOS system manual. Looks like the manual by itself is selling for around 20 bucks. And then I believe if I lot up the console and the floppy disk drive, I should be able to pull between 150 and maybe even up to $200 out of it. Woo, man, that was just, that was such an awesome pick. I still got a smile on my face. That might be one of my favorite private picks I've ever done. I've done, I've done quite a few at this point, but man, how can you not? How can the, how can a prototype pinball machine not put a smile on your face? Whether you're a reseller, a collector, or just a fan of finding cool stuff, that was quite the opportunity. If I had not opened my mouth that day and asked this lady for what I was looking for or told her that I was looking for toys, 
this stuff would probably still be buried either in a basement somewhere or she would have sold it to that toy company. It would not have been something that I even knew existed. So let people know what you do. It can lead to some great opportunities. I just can't believe that that ended up coming to fruition. I give a bunch of people my number just in case they end up finding something else or in case they want to meet up later for some stuff that they say they have. And I might get one call back out of a hundred numbers that I give out. And this is the one that paid off. This right here is why I do this sort of thing because I love finding treasure. I love sharing the experience with you guys and <laughs> it just brings a smile to my face. And I hope this video brought a smile to your face as well and maybe even motivated you to do something different in your business or look out for some new items. If it did, let me know down below by hitting that like button. It, it helps out my channel a bunch to grow. Also, consider subscribing. If you subscribe, it'll let you know whenever I put out a new piece of content. And right now, if you subscribe, I'll, I'll give you a sneak peek into next week's video. If you like this one, you'll definitely like it. So hit that subscribe button. I'll give you a few seconds. Okay, you ready for your sneak peek into next week's video? That's it. That's all the sneak peek I'm giving you. Just know that it is another amazing toy haul, as you could probably tell by those two pieces right there. But that's it. I hope to see you guys all next video for another crazy toy haul. Until next time, keep on treasure hunting. Peace.